Oh, Arsene, I did not mean to wake you. I was just in thought. I have a lot to think about, you know? For starters, we are traveling with interesting comrades, no? The large one... I have not asked his name yet. I should probably do that. He is quiet. I do not trust that. Anyone who stays quiet has secrets. I don't like secrets. The small one, Kent. His manners definitely need some adjustment when it comes to women. He is still young, he has time to learn. Although his attitude does remind me a lot of the tavern folk back in Waterdeep. I hope Maluna is faring well. I do miss her. Though, I did see her break that half-orc's arm and forcefully remove him from that tavern of hers. She'll be fine. I should focus on the task at hand. This house is intriguing. It is spotless. The hunter's den, the main foyer, the dining hall, all clean. Of course, there was that secret passageway behind the bookcase, but it feels as though this house is leading us somewhere. I have to take a closer look at that summoning book. Hopefully it will clarify what happened here. I do feel a strange presence here, though. A familiar one. However, we finally have a creature to face. We have reached an unclean floor, and Kent has awoken some kind of living armor. At this rate, that halfling will be the death of us. Alright, so... Um, Kent, since you were going up to the armor to investigate, you noticed that it was going to move first, so you go first. Now, as a recap, you have an action, you have a move, and you have a bonus action. The action can be used to attack, it can be used to double your speed, things like that. By the bonus way, action, or things you, would call for it. if this room is 10 by 15, you get 5 extra feet of movement, so... Yes, you get 5 extra feet of movement, and also, if you shoot your ranged weapon up close, you will get disadvantage. Is he right next to it? Yes. Okay. Oh, but I get a plus two on ranged attacks. So you would have to roll at disadvantage, which means you roll twice and take the lower number uh, because you're right up to it. Because it's not range anymore, it's melee. Uh, it, it's just a suit of armor to me right now. Do I know what, he, what, what weapons does he have in his hand? Nothing. It's just a big piece of armor. Is that the fist him? Yep. In the face? Fist him cool. in the face. Okay, I'm going to, because I'm so close and I don't really have... I, all I have is one hand right now. Yep. Okay, so what I want to do, and you can tell me if I could do this because I don't know. I want to fire my hand crossbow. Okay. Move out of the way, put down the the crossbow and the candle, and draw my short sword. Can I do all that? Um, or, or can I only do some of that? I would say that as your bonus action, because normally when you draw a weapon, mm -hmm. it's part of your action... Uh, but if you were to put a weapon away and take one out, that's when you have a penalty. So if you drop your stuff and draw, you can do that for your next turn. I will, oh, okay, uh, no, I, I I would drop the shit out of that crossbow, with that hand crossbow. All right, so yeah, so I want to fire the hand crossbow. Okay. Drop everything, draw the short sword, and then try to try to move away a little bit. Now keep in mind, if you go to move away, you will provoke an opportunity attack from the peace farmer. Okay, so then then I will not move away. I will just have my short sword in a defensive stance. Okay. So um, you can shoot your hand crossbow at disadvantage. Mm -hmm. So what do I roll? So you roll your d20, add okay. your attack bonus, but roll your d20 twice and take the lower number. Okay, so I'm, I'm, ro I'm rolling my d20 twice. So I got a 14 and I got a 17. So I take the 14. Plus your then... attack bonus. What's my attack bonus right now? It would be your dexterity modifier plus your proficiency bonus. Okay, so I do 14 plus 3, and then my proficiency bonus is, is a plus two. 2. So 19 total. 19 total. Plus, uh, yeah. You hit. Okay. So now you roll your damage. Okay, now what's... I don't I, I don't know what a hand crossbow's uh, damage. Uh, we'll get the pool. You then... I want to point out why Josh seven. is doing this. That I swear he said... The peace farmer, it was gonna hit him. <laughs> the peace farmer, and I was like, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make and any I, sense. I'm gonna realize he said piece of armor. <laughs> uh, Nick, uh, hand crossbow is one d6 piercing. Got it. So okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna roll my one d6. I got a five, okay. plus so my dex dexterity bonus, which is a three, plus yeah. my my proficiency in range attacks, or no? Nope. Uh, proficiency is only for the attack bonus. The damage only gets your dexterity bonus. So oh, okay. it would be 5 plus 3, so 8 damage. And you do not move. You drop your stuff. You draw your sword. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay. 
Anything Just else? end. Cool. Just end. Yeah. Then you are up. Uh, currently, um, you are basically diagonal away from it, within uh-huh. six, seven feet. Question: I'm looking through my pen dragon class, and the dragon's gift that I have, the breath weapon, mm-hmm. doesn't say that I have to take a short or long rest after using it. I would assume that it would follow the same bit. It as doesn't the one. say though. How powerful is that breath weapon? It's a D10, but it's only a 10 foot cone. It's super close range. Oh, then. Keep it. That's a normal weapon attack. That's fine. Okay. Realizing I'm pointing an arrow at a piece of armor and that it's probably not going to do much. Where's Kent right now? Kent is directly next to you, just like offset. Okay. So if I was to unleash my breath weapon, would he be in the range? Um, If you wanted to, you can, can I, like, move to the side, to the side mm-hmm. and you can blast that way. Okay. Um, I would like to uh, move to the side a bit and then unleash my breath weapon on him. He has to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. He rolls a two. Yeah, that's going to fail. All right, so let's hope I roll better with this die. Nine damage. All right, are you doing anything else? Uh, That is it. I'm going to stay where I am and keep my bow drawn. Oh, this guy rolled a terrible initiative. All right, quick question. Well, we just rolled a good initiative. where I am. Oh, where are you? You're currently at the top of the stairs. If you, you can see him from where you are, but if you traverse maybe six, seven feet forward, you'll be within melee range of him. So if you wanted, you can come up here, basically create an L of you guys. Okay. First thing. So the first thing is I'm going to drop my spear because fuck all that noise, and my greatsword appears on my hand as my bonus action, and I'm going to step up and... Swing at it. Right over Kent's tiny little head. How does a 24 sound for you? I think that hits. <laughs> well, I hope so. God damn. 11 damage. Christ. All right. Um, He's looking, well, not really rough. He just looks like he's armor. <laughs> like armor. shot and like, kind of crippled up. And on fire. <laughs> uh, and on fire. Well, he's not continuing fire, but he's no. red hot. So he's looking like a really rough piece of armor right now. Awesome. All right, so he turns at the first person to attack him, which would be Kent, and it's the person who alarmed him, really, so it makes sense. And what he's going to do is he's going to take up his armored hand and slam it down towards your head, which misses completely because his head is just kind of tilted, so he couldn't see. But then he drives his other hand straight forward and misses you completely. He is not doing well at all. And you're just too short. It's yeah. like the odd job effect. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so, Kent, you are completely good, and it is now your turn. Okay, I'm going to be. I'm going to use my nimbleness to go under and through his legs to the back of him. Okay. And attack him with my short sword uh, from behind. Oh, you can flank him. Yeah. You there's no room behind him to go. Oh damn! He's against the wall, isn't he? But technically, you don't get any flanking advantage in this uh, position. So, if you want, you can go to the other side, so you can be side flanking him. Yeah, let me go to this. Let me go to his, his side, so that way I'm not in his immediate front, okay. and I'm going to hack the fuck out of his leg or torso or however however bad I could do it. Go right ahead. D20. D20 plus your uh, whatever the attack bonus is. Seven plus two, right? Short seven sword plus sword is finesse, so you can add your dexterity or strength bonus, whichever is higher, <laughs> plus your proficiency. Right. Twelve? Twelve? Yeah. You ding across the armor, doing no damage at all. Damn it. Okay. That's it. That's my end. Okay. Um, it is Ven's turn. All right. Um, uh, is the big armored man in front of me? Yep. I'm going to move to the side so that basically they're on either side and I'm in oh, front wait. of the armor again. Great. Sorry, there's t- you're hitting an armored man next to an armored man. Uh, you mean the piece of armor? Yeah, I don't want to say his name since I don't technically know his yes. name. Uh, so what do you want to do, sorry? Uh, so my ally is directly in front of me, right? No, he's to your side. He's not directly in front well, of you. So However, I have if, you were, if you were to blast through for 10 feet, you will hit Kent on the right. other side. Can I move to the other side and then breathe fire over Kent? You could move in front of the armor and blast him into the wall. And I would be fine there? Yeah. I'll do that. Okay. So you move over. You go to where Kent was standing. 
and the armor is kind of following him around. You come up, you open up your mouth, and uh, dexterity saving throw, right? Yes. You, you burp. <laughs> Acid burp. Kitten, get off the table. Fire oh. burp. Oh. Acid burp's funnier, though. It's chilly. I mean, just ate some, I just ate some chili, guys. Glass mail, chili dog. Just to put my rolls out there, I've rolled a two, a two, a three, and a two. Yes. You're having a hot day there, man. I always do. Let's see what go to got. Vegas. <laughs> A tan. A tan? A tan the armor gets turned inside out through the ribs with just heated flame that just carves through it. And the armor crumples onto the ground. No sign of life left. Nice. All right, then. Lucky us. Uh, anything else in the room? I kind of wipe away some spit that came out because I got a little mad there for a second. Uh, what you can see... Yes. To your left is a bit of wall to the left and then a door. And then to your right is a little alcove where the far side is a double door and it goes into an alcove area which you really can't see at the moment. Okay. But there's nothing else in this room other than armor, right? Uh, In terms of items, no. Yeah, nothing on him. Also, directly in front of you to the left against the the wall the armor was on is another Mm -hmm. door. I'm going to inspect the suit of armor to see if I can notice anything that controlled it or if he just moved on his own while okay. and then and also see if I can uh, retrieve my small hand crossbows bolt. Okay, go ahead. All right. So, I'm gonna, where is my D20? Uh and then what is it? Perception, I don't know, 11. Uh investigation. Oh, investigation. Uh 9. 9. Uh you don't see anything really about it. You like there's no one inside. So it had an act of some respect. You just don't know what. Got it. Uh, in terms of your bolts, uh, your ammunition, uh, you pick up all of it. All right. So then before we move on, I pick up uh, – I want to reload my hand crossbow and okay. then hand the candle back to Drew's character and say, uh, I think I'm going to need both hands for weapons. I'm, I'm going gonna... Gonna to hold my sword in one hand and the hand crossbow in the other. I'm gonna take the candle, put the great sword back on you know, my back, uh, and then pick up the spear. And then I'm gonna light the oil lamps on the landing. The oil lamps are now burning. Good. I have a, a plan for them in case we have to retreat quickly. When um, you do so, make a perception check. All of us or just him? All of you. Uh, <laughs> looking like an 11. Okay. Seven. 19. You two don't notice, but Kent. You notice that when the lights go on, you, the little scenes that were on the walls, like the, the trees and the falling leaves and the tiny little critters and the tiny corpses hanging from the trees and the worms bursting up from the ground, those last two are new. You now yeah. see corpses just hanging from the trees. They're not swinging. They're not moving. They're just they're hanging from the trees. They're just there. You notice that most of them are dead. There's a couple struggling. And there's one of about a five-year-old little girl grasping at the at the rope. Not quite dead yet. It is a very intricate carving. If we can tell that she's five. <laughs> you can guesstimate the age. It could just be a halfling. It could be an old halfling. I mean, As Ken's five, looking not... at that, I look to the big armor guy, okay. and I say, uh, as far as combat is concerned, I think that this would be beneficial if we knew your name, in case we had to call it out and warn you of something instead of being armored man. Oh, you don't like the name armored man? Fine. Uh, I look at him and I extend my hand and I just say Mikhail. Nice to meet you, Mikhail. I nice say, to know your name. I say, that's a beautiful name. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Is little man being sarcastic? I do not know. <laughs> I just go back to looking at the pictures <laughs> on the wall. I say we just check out that first door. Yeah, agree. Let's go door by door until we get to so, the double. I'm gonna inspect the door. Also, my vo- character voice is just gonna change until I find it. So y'all just got to You're deal fine. with it. <laughs> you'll you get there. Okay. Uh, uh, cool. Investigation on the door. Uh, what did you roll? Eight. Eight. Uh, uh four. You don't see anything about the door. I fucking open it. Uh, you open the door, and do you guys follow him in? Yeah. yeah. I just look in first and see what I see. Uh, it's pretty dark, but you can have the light from the oil. Uh, I have dark vision. Kind of, I know. 
Uh, it's pouring into the this for everybody else too. Okay. It's pouring into the room a little bit. See a a brief little light coming in from the windows against the far wall. Uh, for those with dark vision, you guys see this fine, but there's a varying degree of lighting in the room. Okay. Um, dust and cobwebs shroud an elegantly appointed bedroom. There is. Uh, there's two sets of doors on your right. Uh, you can't really see where they go to at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, however, the the far doors on the, on the right are panes of stained glass. Mm. Um, so you don't know where this would lead to, but it's a window of some sort. Uh-huh. Uh, just you can't see through it because of the pane glass. Right. So yeah, it's just a, a big bedroom that contains a large bed, uh, two end tables, and a wardrobe that seems to be empty. Okay. Uh, uh, mounted on the wall next to the wardrobe is a full-length mirror uh, with an ornate wooden frame carved to look like ivy and berries. Uh, I would like to immediately point out to my two allies, we've gone to two floors that were pristine, and the third floor is covered in dust. What is it about this floor that makes it different from the other two? Monsters. Well, obviously, yes, there's monsters somewhere up here. I just want that to be known. In case anyone has any speculation or anything. And I walk in the room. Okay. What do you two do? I let's go up to the mirror. Just to okay. look at myself. I He's follow. A... Okay. You could look at the mirror too. Do I see my reflection? Am I a vampire? I just follow I into the room. I, uh... I check I check the glass window. Okay. Uh the the doorway glass window? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're at the glass window, you're at the mirror, and Drew, you're I'm just standing there, I'm just kind of watching. Okay. Um then sees himself in the mirror. Uh, cool. He sees his dragon kind of take an eye and seeing himself in there, or herself in there, sorry. Herself. Silver dragon, correct? Silver dragon, yes. Yeah, so, uh, kind of doing little things to look at herself in there. Cool. Dragons tend to be a bit vain, kind of carries over to childhood too. Mikhail surveys the room, notices the two sets of doors, and watches uh, as... Kent walks to the stained glass one. Um, Kent, when you go to that door and you kind of peer through and look through, uh, it looks like there's just an, a balcony, and you notice it's the balcony that you saw from the outside of the house. But make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, no. Natural 20. Oh, you damn. notice that the fog is pressed right up against the door, and instinctually just on pure reflex, just slam the door shut. You don't know what the fog is really there for, Mm -hmm. but you do not want to find out. So you just slam it shut. Okay. I wonder what would have happened if I failed. (laughs) Uh, Just a curious question. What do baby dragons eat? Because I would probably have a bunch of that in my bag. Uh, Baby dragon food you can get at your local dragon car. (laughs) Nice, nice, nice. Petco, you know. Uh, like, that's my are thing. they mostly, like, carnivores? I think uh, they are, right? They are. Okay. I think. And, like, jerky would be good, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you All get, right. like, some of that in your packs. Too. All right. Don't you, you dare try to feed him or feed me to him? No, I'm just going to feed um, Arsene some jerky. Okay. See if she's hungry or peckish. And when you do that and you turn back around, you notice that the berries on the, the mirror, one or two of them are actually eyeballs. Real? That are looking in different directions. They don't Great. move. They're just they're there. Just they're not berries. They're eyeballs. I think it's part of the design. Okay, cool. Um, can I do an investigation check on this mirror? See if I see anything else weird about it? Uh, yeah, run a perception check. Perception? Yeah. Six. You don't notice anything. Can I check the mirror? You can if you'd like to. Yeah, let's do it. I don't have a very good perception. A six, uh, a nine, no. You don't notice anything. Oh. All right. It's a wall. Uh, there's no, like, cupboards or anything, right? You said this, there's a cabinet that was empty or something like that? There's, like, when you walked in, there was a mm-hmm. one set of double doors. There was a second set of double doors. That was the one that Nick tried to open. Right. Uh, there was the bed, two end tables, and an empty wardrobe. And then there was a full-length mirror. And that's it. I want to check the end tables. Okay. Investigation? Seven on the first one. You don't notice anything in there. You just notice the dust. Is it empty? Like, I open it? It's empty. All right, I'll go to the other one. Uh, 16. Uh, you go to the second one. You don't notice anything in there. Um, but you do notice different 
markings in the end table, as if something disturbed the dust on the top. Okay. Uh, does it look like, like fingerprints? It looks like a finger of some sort, or something disturbed it. You just don't know what. Can I, I wouldn't be able to tell how like recent that was, right? No, it's just been there. Okay. It may have potentially been from the wind from the door. You don't know. Right. Okay. I'm going to go to the bed, and once again, strip it and look for things. You see some sheets. You see a mattress. This this one's not made, though. This one oh. is disheveled. Huh. I don't lift up the mattress. Anything under it? Nope. You see just gigantic layers of dirts and cob... Dirts. Dirts and cobwebs. Feel around the mattress. Do I feel any lumps? Anything might be hiding in it? You notice the mattress is a bit shitty. That's it. Not in the physical sense. I mean, like, it's... it's no, yeah, I gotcha. Uh, what about... Okay, go to the other double doors then, not the ones that Nick went to, but the other one. Okay. Um, do you you just open them? Do you want to check them? What do you want to do? Brave and heroic decisions. I'm going to open them. Okay, you open them. Um, and what are you two doing? Just curious. I was expecting... I was inspecting the end table, right? Uh, yes. And Nick, what are you doing? I'll just, I'll just follow Drew. Or Mikhail. Okay. Nick, you notice a terrified skeletally thin young woman reach out towards Drew. I don't notice this. <laughs> no. he's She's right behind you. In the door that I'm opening? The moment you open the door... Oh, she appears, appears behind me. Okay, gotcha. And the only person to see is Kent. So Roll initiative. <clears throat> Son of a bitch. Before, before, we, before we roll initiative, I say, A GHOST! <laughs> I, that immediately catches my attention, and I look over to the right. Do I see this thing also? Uh, you will, uh, after this surprise round, where Kent and this creature will go. Oh, great. After the surprise round, I definitely want to say uh, ghost in that same exact accent, so that way it just comes into play that I, I have weird accents. I, I don't... I never stay the same. Sounds good I'm to me. Saying, Jeepers, guys! A ghost! <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Would you say that you have a vehicle that is a machine for mystery? <laughs> <laughs> I solve... I solve mi- riddles, and usually they're just guys and in costumes. <laughs> and, you, and, your, and your incentive for the for solving these mysteries is dog treats. <laughs> so just to put this in perspective here, um, if Mikel is looking at the door, mm-hmm. this creature is directly behind him, okay. and then you are directly behind her looking at the mirror. Okay. No, uh, I was by the I was at the the, the end table, the sorry. End table. Okay. So you are basically 10 feet away, and your back is to where she would be. Okay. Um, Kent, you are to the left of Mikkel. So now this creature is, if you're looking at Mikkel, diagonally right in front of you. Okay. Um, all right, so I have Kent's initiative. What's your other two? Uh, I have a 10. And Drew? A 15. <laughs> all right, so the first person to go will be Kent. Okay. Uh, I fire my hand crossbow at this witch. So I just want to tell you what's in that room ahead of you in case you want to use the room. The room seems to be a nursery. Oh, and it great. contains a crib great. covered with a hanging black shroud. Awesome. Creepy ghost, baby! And that's <laughs> all that's in the room. Awesome. I love every single aspect of that room. I'm not going to go in there. How far am I away from this, from this woman? Uh, you are diagonally five feet away. Oh god! So I have a, a it's a disadvantage. Disadvantage for range, but you technically have your short sword in front of you, well, on you, and your hand crossbow, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. Then I forgot that I have my short sword in my hand, so I'm going to fire the hand crossbow into the air, just wherever, just to try to get her. And I was gonna say just to try to get her attention away from Mikhail, but I'm gonna swipe at her with my short sword. Um, I'll allow that. That's not an actual attack. That's fine. Yeah, I just want to, like, fire just to make a noise. Fly! Flourish! <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm going to roll a... I got a 15. I'm there with you, Drew. I know. You're the uh, only one there who's going to get that one. Yep. Uh, 15. Uh, that will hit. And a 6 uh, damage. Okay. A uh, 6 damage. 
So you hit it, and it doesn't seem to do as much damage as you were expecting. Great. Now, this creature goes. Yeah, I'll, I'll say potentially what it is next round when you guys all see it. Did, did um, I draw her attention away from him or no? No. Ah, damn it. Sorry, buddy, I tried. No worries, man. Um, actually, make a... Highs or lows? <laughs> um, intimidation check. All right, so what is it? A name? Int- intimidation. Intimidation? So there's a d20 plus my modifier? Intimidation bonus, yeah. 20. Not like a natural 20, an 18 plus 2. Regular 20? Yeah, you do grab her uh, grab her attention. Gotcha. Oh, wow, that. Uh, so you see this skeletal... Fuck, I shouldn't have taken her attention. He's, he's a tank. <laughs> I'm a weakling. <laughs> you so many bad decisions. Yeah. She stares at you straight through the eyes. You know that she has your... Sorry, you have her undivided attention now. Oh, fuck. No. And what she does... <laughs> This is a bad move. If she reaches out to you. And, and what? Attacks you. Oh, good. Wait. Wait. Is she hot? She's tall. <laughs> She's skeletally thin. Yes. She is woman, not bitch. human looking anymore. Oh, uh, okay. All right, never mind then. She looks awful. She had a bad day. Great. I say... <gasps> natural 20. That nat 20. <sighs> I get, wait, hold on. I get it. Oh, no, that's never mind. Of uh, frightened saving throws. Anyway. So way, the way that I'm just homebrewing, not homebrewing, but critical rolls are going to be roll, dice damage, double it, add modifier. Right. Got it. Okay. That's not homebrew. That's the rules. No, I was going to say homebrew. I was, that's the, that's the way I'm doing it. Okay. Oh, Christ. <laughs> I don't like the fact that I heard at least three dice. <laughs> yeah, no, that's no bueno. Oh my god. Um, Nick, you take 26 damage. <laughs> Holy shit. You're dead. What's your health? Uh, my hit points are 10. <laughs> Nick, you have this creature reach inside of you. <laughs> take your soul. You feel a chill run from the top of your head, down your spine, through your legs, and you feel nothing. And Quick your question. body crumples to the ground. Quick question. How is this level one of anything? Nick is dead. Yeah, no, I know. Curse of Strahd is one to ten. How is that a level one monster? I'm aware. That's bullshit. All and she bullshit. turns her attention back to Mikkel. All right, hold on. I need to. I need to act it out. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you. It was Very a quick good. death. It was a quick death, guys. Very good. <laughs> John is in a place. Yeah, because a level no, one it's... adventure just ripped the soul out of a character. We're fighting a monster <laughs> who you roll three d six against. That's not a level one At creature. Level one. So I, I scratched turns, her. I scratched her for you guys. Turns her you attention did. over to Mikkel <laughs> and just glares. No smile. No nothing. And it is now Mikkel's turn. Well, I heard uh, the sound of that crossbow, and uh, I'm going. How close would you say she is out of game? Five feet. Cool. Uh, using my a sweet killer instinct, I come back around with my elbow. Right where I just assume I can just feel where she's at. Uh, so an arm strike. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. No, I take that back. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna spin, and as I spin, my blade pops into my hand. Okay, that's better. Cause I'm. This is a stupid, dumb shit monster. Bucky, after this ba- after this battle, before we go into the next room, can you go down to the necromancy room and get me back to life? I'll try. Thanks, bud. You're looking pretty dead over there, Nick. Yep. Trying. Right, group, what'd you do? Uh, uh, 22. 22. You hit. How's a fucking oh. 16 feel, bish? Don't, don't, don't mind me. Just a dead guy checking Snapchat. <laughs> well, what else are you gonna do when you're dead? <laughs> so the sword goes through. You do a bunch of damage, but not as much as you were expecting. Yeah, no, I figured that. Just not looking fantastic, though. 
she didn't in the first place, but she looks less fantastic. Mm-hmm. Would you like to do anything else? Can I use my move to shoulder check her back? <laughs> no, that would be, be an attack. Yeah. Yeah. No, I figured. Then, no, I can't do anything else. Then it is your turn. I now look and see what's going on. What do I see? You turn around, and about ten feet away from you is this creature. Uh, also, um, both of you uh, make a... <laughs> and dead you. Uh, make a... Um, just a standard intelligence check. I was wondering if Nick's character would have done. 20. 13. Uh, 9. Uh, Andrew, yours with advantage? Uh, that's 18, then. 18? Both Tell me what I know about this. You both realize this is a specter. Like from First. DC Comics? No, not that yeah, one. Definitely that one. A specter um, is an angry, unfettered spirit of a humanoid that has been prevented from passing to the afterlife. Um, they no longer possess connections to who or what they were, yet they are condemned to walk the world forever. Do we know? Do I know any weaknesses with a 20? There are no weaknesses. No weaknesses. However, they are resistant to a lot of damage. Would I happen to know, like, what I've read about them in a book or something? Would I know if they have, like, arcane resistances? They have resistances to a lot of elemental stuff. A lot of elemental stuff. And also conditions as well, like okay. being charmed or things like that. Okay. Um, I would like to do the one thing that I do best and breathe fire on them. Uh, okay. You can do that without hitting somebody. That's yep. fine. Uh, it's so, dexterity. dexterity. Uh, nope. Uh, three damage. Okay. Takes a little bit of damage, but nothing much. Okay. How much room is behind me? None. Am I up against the wall? You're against the end table. How big is the room? Uh, the room to your left is five feet, and then there's the stained glass outside. Mm -hmm. um, to your right is the bed, and another ten feet. And in front of you is ten feet, which is the specter, and then the mirror is directly behind it. Then I guess I just back up into a corner. You want to back up towards the stained glass window, that one? Yeah. Okay. And All that's right. It. So at this point, can't you wake up? Oh, great. Yes? You Sorry. wake up. Oh, what? Hold on, I missed this. I missed this. Zambo. Zombie. Just want everyone to know that you are a zombie, and you are going to bite us, and I'm going to have to kill you. Nick, I need you to write on your sheet a new stat. Okay. The stat is madness, and you now have a level one in madness. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Now, I know something about your character as part of Madness. You'll find it out. Great. But you are alive, at full hit points, prone, like nothing happened. But you feel a bit off. What the hell, guys? Did I just die? You say that as the specter is still standing five feet away from you. Yeah. And yeah. you are on the ground. Okay, is it my turn now? It is your turn. Okay. Uh, I want to shoot the fuck out of this bitch. Okay. You're still five feet in front of it, and you have to stand up first. Uh, okay, then let me stand up. Let I wouldn't me... let you shoot from the ground for effect, uh, but you would be at disadvantage no matter what, so you could if you want to. Just keep in mind, if she goes to attack you, you're going to be in deep trouble. Okay, okay, okay. And what is my current hit points? Full. Full hit points? And nothing happened. Okay, does she notice me at all? Uh, she's currently con concentrated on Mikkel right now. Okay, then I am just going to get as far away as possible. Damn, I don't know. I'm actually, you know what I'm going to do? Ah, uh, no, that's a bad idea. You said she she's looking rough, right? Yeah, she's not looking great. I said right, just finish then. her off. All right, then yeah, I'll just I'll just attack her again. I get up and I'll attack her again with my short sword. Okay, go ahead. I'm scrounging around because I lost my pencil. I have no idea where it went. Uh, I got a I got a five. You whiff it. Okay, that's it. Okay. She does not care about you, but instead it is her turn, and she cares about Mikkel greatly right now. So she is going to reach out towards Mikkel. Bring it on, bish. 
Uh, that misses. How do you know? You're damn right. Because you got, like, all the armor. Yeah. What, what'd you roll? Uh, nine. Yeah, I just slapped that away. I'm just like, don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Uh, the almighty hand of Kellen Borg. No, that shit, please. Nope. <laughs> so what she does <laughs> is, <laughs> since you slap it away, she moves through you. That's cheating, but all right, let's go with it. And ends in inside of your body. She's not possessing you. She's, She's just, just standing, standing in the same me. place. And you feel it, this cold shiver go through. And you think it like would be the metal, like that coldness, just penetrates it. And it enters into your body, and you just feel cold. Uh, you take three points of force damage. Uh, again, I'm going to say absolute bullshit, but fine. Okay. Wait, that's how ghosts work? I thought that's they took force work. damage. Spectres work? Huh, interesting. Uh, that is how they work. This one's changing. Oh, okay. Huh. All right, cool. Think of it more like, um, like I'm making her take damage too. Oh, okay. But I'm making him take this weird... Yeah, no, it makes sense. Yeah. Who's up now? Uh, it is currently Mikkel's turn. Okay. Well, I'm going to jump back five feet so she's out of me, hopefully. Into the nursery or into... Into the nursery. Room? Okay. Nothing happens. You're sitting there. But does she uh, pop out of me? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to attack again. Okay. And then I'm also... Let's see. Let's see what happens first. Um, 17? Uh, 17 hits. Uh, 10 damage. She seems to be flickering in and out on basically the end of any rope that she has tied to this world. It is now Ben's turn. Uh, I would look to move up to 10 feet within it. We're okay. far enough where my flame would be able to just reach it, and that's it. Would I be able to do that? Uh, you can. Yes, you can do that. You'll basically hit her on a diagonal, and it'll yeah. shoot towards okay. the door you guys came in through. All right, then I would like to be Dylon and spit off fighter. As is. That's a 20. 20? All right, she just takes half damage, then. Uh, four damage. Okay. Total. Uh, four, it's up. eight, and then four damage. The moment just kind of slows. And you see Kent kind of pushing backwards, trying to get out of the way. You see Mikkel finishing the slash through. And you see Ven dip to the right, get an angle, and fire just comes straight out and engulfs the air in front of him. Takes the specter, and the fire seems to pull the apparition together and rips her apart. And the fire bashes into the wall dissipates nothing more. You now notice that with the fire going on in the room, the mirror kind of went off kilter, and there's a weird door behind the mirror. And you both look at Kent, who was dead, who's not dead, wondering how the hell he's back. Taking Initiative is a product of the Spark Network. For future updates, news, and all nerd-related stuff, visit us at thespark.network. To visit us on social media, you can find us on Twitter with the handle at TI underscore pod. That is again at TI underscore P-O-D. You can find us on Facebook at the page Taking Initiative Podcast. And finally, to find us on Tumblr, go to takinginitiativepodcast.tumblr.com. I'm Josh Perot, and I am the DM. You can find me on Twitter at Xyroxis the Beard. That's X I R O X I S the Beard. Jonathan Buckmaster as Vindelara Greymire at Bucky underscore Masters on Twitter. Donna Fenimore no, as no, Cali- Next time. Next time. I promise you, next time. Donna Fenimore. Uh, I promise as Cali- you, next time. You want to get some ice cream? Yes. Okay, we'll get you some ice cream. This is Drew Tillman, and I play Metal Pots and Pans Man. You can find me on Twitter at NotThatDrew. This is Nicholas Figueroa, and I play Kent Brickwood of the East Farthing Brickwoods. You could find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at NicoFigs. That's at N-I-K-O-F-I-G-S. This episode was edited by John Buckmaster and Josh Perot. 
All music on the show is property of Kevin McLeod and the Incomtech website. You can find any information about the songs played in this episode in the description below. To give credit to the classes played in this episode, the Pendragon class played by John Buckmaster was created by Daresite Phantom on Reddit. The Gunslinger class played by Nick Figueroa was made by Matthew Mercer. And the Doom Guide class was created by our own Drew Tillman. Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and the Curse of Strahd module are property of Wizards of the Coast. 